Welcome back to Tech Forge, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we're having a look at another video about fans, but this time we're getting six different fans. And we're pitting them all against each other, gladiator style. One's just like these. Although that's two. Six is a different number. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's roll the intro, get stuck in. Right, to business. The test system for today's video is an i7-2700K overclocked to 4.8 GHz at 1.39 volts to put a decent heat strain on the fans and cooler, which incidentally is a Cooler Master Saiden 240P, a 27mm thick 2x120mm AIO that we have had in service here at TechForge for a little over 18 months now. We left the Saiden 240P outside the case with direct access to ambient air during testing, thus eliminating any case flow bottlenecks that may have existed while also simplifying the changeover and noise recording processes. To get our numbers for each fan type, we would let the system boot and then idle it for 10 minutes before recording idle temps and RPM, and then running an ADA64 stress test on CPU, FPU and cache for 15 minutes to attain our full load temperatures and RPMs. Before all this, we made sure to take the 240mm AIO out of the system, give it a clean up of any dust, there was a tiny amount, not a whole lot, and reapply fresh thermal paste since it had not been done in 12 months. Looking at the old application, it was still fairly viscous and of even and adequate spread, but it was important to make sure a fresh application was done so we could rule out old paste of unknown condition contaminating the testing. Time to meet the lineup now and we have a bunch of different fans on hand ranging from a basic case fan right up to high RPM and RGB offerings. They represent a broad choice of options available to the public at varying price points. The idea today is to see what difference various choices make, if any, in this particular scenario. The results are only reflective of this test load as different load and usage scenarios such as air tower coolers or case flow applications may deliver different results. On deck we have the generic case fan of which we have little details on and little case to do so. They are only included to get a worst case scenario when it comes to fan options other than no fans at all. Although very quiet they offer no PWM control, very little performance in general although at very little cost. You can usually find these at hard rubbish or electronics recycling stores for just a few dollars. A step up from there is the Cooler Master Sequel Flow fan, in this case the blue LED version, although green and red are also usually available. For a tidy sum of $9 each they can be had and provide excellent entry level cooling capability, although again no PWM control, meaning they will run at mostly static noise and RPM range. If your space is limited and a radiator or heat sink and fan is unable to clear system components, you may want to opt for low profile or slim fit fans such as the Silverstone FN123 Slim. At 15mm thick, the FN123 shaves off 10mm from a regular 25mm fan thickness and it may just be the trimming you need to get a cooling system to fit. At $9.50 each, they won't break the bank but also have no PWM control and are limited in their RPM response range. If RGB is your jam but you don't want to pay through the nose for it, nor have your system catch fire with some dodgy flea market brands, then perhaps the Deepcool RF120 is for you. Available for $49 in a 3-pack or $16.33 each, with all the supporting RGB cables and a fan hub, the RF120 is an affordable way to sexify your system. A good balance of airflow and PWM RPM range mean that RF120s will suit just about any build while leaving your pocket happy and with enough change from a pineapple for a Macca's frozen coke on the way home. Speeding things up now comes the CryoRig QF120 Performance Series, a whirlwind of a fan with huge airflow and static pressure numbers for an outstanding price of $15 each. The QF120 Performance Series doesn't muck about or take any prisoners either, it just brute forces as much air as you could want and doesn't offer any pleases or thank yous while doing so. The fan equivalent of a big block V8 muscle car it's difficult to go faster and harder for cheaper than the QF120 Performance Series. Lastly but not leastly is the simply amazing Corsair ML120 Premium Fans. They may be a bit ordinary looking with the black and grey theme, but they blend into any build and kick some serious ass. Flowing more air at higher static pressure than Corsair's other high-end RGB offerings such as the SP, HD and LL series, the ML Premium line is also vastly more affordable at $42 for a twin pack. If you love Corsair products but you don't want RGB and you don't have these fans, then it's high time you did. Now that the introductions are done, let's have a listen to load noise levels before getting into the results.
So there we see some surprisingly big differences in noise levels. The Cry Rigs and the Corsair ML series, they were both fairly loud compared to the other fans, and that's purely because they spin a lot faster. In the flesh, they have around about the same volume level, but the Cryo Rigs do have a higher pitch, and you may pick that up in the video, but the higher pitch makes them feel or seem louder than the Corsairs, even though if you leave the room, they're kind of about on par. Surprisingly, the FN123 Slim fans by Silverstone were quite quiet. They were measurably quieter than their three-pin counterparts in the Cooler Master Sickle Flows. The big standout noise-wise was, of course, the Deep Cool RF120s, which were able to maintain a decent noise profile even under full load at full RPM. Of course, we didn't really care enough about the case fans to have recorded them, so we left them out. So will the monster airflow of the sickle flows and the cryo rigs and the corsairs be enough to outweigh this noise disparity? Will they just blow the competition away? Will the case fans thermal throttle? And also, will Deep Cool's quietness and lack of high RPM fan hurt it in performance stakes? Get ready to find out, because here come the giraffes. Graphs. Not giraffes. Well, 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 what a surprise the case fans didn't throttle, although in fairness, the ambient temperature in the room for the testing was 19 degrees Celsius, so on a hotter day, a hot summer's day, 28, 30, 30 plus degrees, they may have throttled. Other than that, we see no major differences between the fans tested, despite their performance ranges, on the 240mm radiator at 27mm thick. A thicker radiator might have shown up a larger performance delta as the thickness of the radiator then makes it harder for the air to flow through so those high performance fans may have had an edge if the radiator was one of those thickly designed ones. So it does seem on this particular radiator type and on this beefy sort of overclock that any sort of fan above a case fan is perfectly fine. Price to performance wise the sickle flows were the major winner overall. They only cost $9 each. The noise wasn't horrible, and they could match the performance with the big boys, no problems. Performance to noise-wise, however, the deep cool RF120s ran away with it. They were within a couple of degrees of the big boys, and they were so much quieter, not to mention better looking. Airflow-wise though, the cryo rigs, the sequel flows, and the Corsair MLs were far and away better for airflow. They were pushing much more air through the radiator at that point, which means better cooling for your internal components and also the heat sinks on your VRMs and your PCB and your memory sticks as well as your graphics cards and all those sort of components that need a lot of fresh air to function well. It's also worth noting that we did test with the radiator outside of the case and of course case mounting can have an effect on how they perform. They were mounted to the front of the case then you may see degradation of performance if that front of the case is restrictive so the lower airflow fans can't draw that air through the restrictive gaps that some cases may have. So that's something to keep in mind. So, considering price, performance, noise and features, which fans stayed in the case after testing was complete? By this point it should come as no surprise it was the Deep Cool RF120 triple pack. They have PWM control, very low noise when compared to high flow fans, and yet perfectly acceptable temperatures under heavy load, despite the second lowest static pressure and airflow rating out of all the fans we brought to the table. The luxury of RGB, if you so wish it, is also a bonus, just something to zazz up the rig and make it feel a little bit special. Even if I hated RGB with every fibre of my being, I would still use the RF120s and just not use the RGB functions, purely because they are just so much quieter than the high flow designs. 
Well, I hope there was something to take away from this video and there was some sort of information in there that you could take away from it. If not, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.